Joining us now is former Deputy White House Press Secretary for the Trump administration, Sarah Matthews. Sarah, you seem to have a pretty similar reaction last night to Jeb Bush, who, of course, was in turn kind of mocking Trump, saying, what a low-energy speech by the Donald, time for new leaders. What'd you think? Yeah, I mean, it was just that. It was low energy, uninspiring. I mean, during my time working for President Trump, I've watched him give hundreds of speeches over the two years that I worked for him. And that was by far one of the most boring. I mean, he himself seemed boring while giving the speech. And you could tell he was trying really hard to stay on script. But then he started to get bored and started to ad lib. And it just turned into a rambling mess, in my opinion. Sarah, the National Review uh, this morning, I think, says uh, reflects what a lot of former allies of the president, Republicans, are thinking and saying that the headline is just no. I think we can show it. And the first line is, to paraphrase Voltaire, after he attended an orgy, once was an experiment, twice would be perverse. Poppy so early. I know. <laughs> I didn't say it. They wrote it. I just repeated it. <laughs> but do you, do you think, <laughs> do you think that it's just the media that was behind him that is turned and a lot of Republican lawmakers and quote unquote elites, does that indicate anything about his ardent followers? I do think that um, it's not. I think we need to pass over him. I think that, you know, he's uh, shown that he's not fit to serve. I think that by, you know, personally by inciting um, an insurrection, I think that he's unfit to hold office ever again. But I do think that last night's speech just showed that, uh, you know, he's uninspiring. It was kind of the same speech I've heard him give over the years. There's nothing new to it. This was an opportunity for him to give his followers a forward-looking message. Mm -hmm. And in my opinion, it was kind of a boring speech. We should remind people that Sarah, that, that you, that she quit the day of the insurrection yeah. because of what he did. This is a, a, a tweet that is getting a lot of attention uh, as well. And this is from NPR. And it's a breaking. Donald Trump, who tried to overthrow the results of the 2020 presidential election and inspired a deadly riot at the Capitol in a desperate attempt to keep himself in power, has filed to run for president again in 2024. That is chock full of nuts, as they say, um, and basically explains what's happened over the last seven years in just one sentence. The question is, why is he defying even members of his own party, even allies who loved him before and say, who are now saying, don't do this? And as Poppy pointed out, no, from the National Review. Why is he doing it? I do think that he thinks that this is a potential way for him to avoid, you know, these criminal investigations that are swarming around him. Um, but I also think it's his e own ego. I mean, he can't, you know, admit to himself that he lost the 2020 election. And so he thinks that he needs to probably prove something um, to his followers or to his self. And um, I do think that uh, we do need to move in a new direction. I think that a lot of Republicans, both publicly and privately, have expressed um, dismay that he announced so early, um, especially with the Georgia Senate runoff happening. I think all um, focus for Republicans should be on that. But that's going to harm Herschel Walker with this early announcement as but well. It, and you know what? It, it doesn't shield him. I mean, but it's just, is it an offer that he believes, a narrative that he can sell to voters? Because it, it really doesn't shield him that he's running. No, I completely agree. It definitely does not shield him um, from those investigations. But I do think that it's his way of then, if you know they do come at him, he can make that case to his voters of, oh, look, this is all political. They're only going after me because they don't want me to be president again. So that's what it seems to be the case, in my opinion. It, it is part of, I'm told that is part of what drove that announcement last night, why it was so early, is because of the investigations. Sarah, I do wonder, you, you worked in the Trump White House. Obviously, I was there in the briefing room at the time. I wonder about the staffing, what that's going to look like for this second run. Because Ivanka Trump put out a statement overnight saying, I do not plan to be involved in politics. While I will always love and support my father going forward, I will do so outside the political arena. Do you think a lot of your former colleagues will go back to work for Trump again? I think some of the bigger names that you've seen, um, I don't think they will go back and work for him. You know, Ivanka made clear that she will not be playing a role if, um, you know, he ends up winning another presidential election. Um, I think that you are going to see some of the same folks, though, um, from the previous administration um, stick with him. A lot of them are still down in uh, Mar-a-Lago with him to this day. Um, and I think that 
there is a chance that uh, some of those folks will go back. I will definitely not be one of them. Not that I would be welcome back anyways, <laughs> but um, I just can't imagine going back and working for him after um, watching him push all of these lies about the election and obviously what he did on January 6, 2021 as well. Sarah Matthews, thank you very much. Really Sarah. appreciate you coming on.